semester at San Diego Mesa College. Um, and I did my um, research um, topic on the American Dream, the social construction of luck. Um, an ongoing topic of discussion in the US is the weakening of the middle class. While the rich have always been able to keep and expand their wealth, the poor as a class have been structurally pre prevented from wealth. The way the average American views the American dream and the path to financial success contributes to the way our society continues to keep the working class in a state of acceptance of these structural barriers because of the illusory mythological confection that if they work hard enough one day, they might become titans of industry. Um, Last year, I was having an interesting discussion with my partner about how and why people are able to obtain and gain wealth while others remain poor. As I started researching this topic, um, in order to prove my point, I came across some very interesting research. Uh, it seems that every society seems to follow the 80-20 rule, where 20% of the people own 80% of the population's wealth. Um, According to the 2018 MIT Technology Review titled, If You're So Smart, Why Aren't You Rich? Turns out it's just chance. It turns out that luck has more to do with our successes than hard work and skill alone. The study goes on to say that people are given lucky and unlucky circumstances in life, and if those people are talented enough to pursue the lucky circumstances presented to them, then that is what sets them apart from the rest. Conversely, when people who already are in unlucky circumstances, such as lower socioeconomic status or minority, an unlucky event such as the death of a loved one plays itself out much differently than it would if that same unlucky event was presented in a wealthy household. Another recent study also confirms these results. Three Italian scholars performed a 40-year computer simulated career model to see where people ended up with career-wise. So what about those who are wealthy today? Did they really earn their place through the sweat of their brow, the cut of their jib, the brains in their head, and their unwavering determination? The answer is a definitive no. Rather than being gifted or special, the greatest determinant in acquiring vast wealth is merely being fortunate, according to a new analysis. But reading people, other people's work was not enough, so I was interested to see how people define financial success and what they thought contributed to it. So I decided to conduct my own society uh, study where I asked 142 people from different backgrounds, including but not limited to college students, law students, nonprofit volunteers, activists, and professionals to fill out a targeted questionnaire with demographic questions, an open-ended question where they were asked to define financial success, and questions pertaining to their view on what the most contributing factors are to financial success based on their definition. And I uh, used Google Forms online, so people could fill them out online. So I had people from, um, I'm from Northern California, so I had a lot of people from Northern California, and then all around the San Diego, and um, even like Mexico area, filled them out. And then I also gave them out um, hard, hard copies as well. Um, and I did all my statistics by hand, and uh, my charts were by Excel. So, um, this was my first time conducting my own research, so I asked a lot of demographic questions, but I ended up finding a correlation between um, income levels and um, the percent of their attributed answers. So I, um, I asked questions of um, what they thought contributed the most to financial success, and I put in um, things like gender, um, demographics, sexual orientation, things that you can't control, um, and then I put that into the category of luck, and some people chose luck. Um, like random chance events um, as well as demographics, and then uh, hard work and determination. Um, and as you can see across the board, it didn't really matter how much money these people were making. Um, our, um, you know, our dominant ideology in America is that hard work um, will bring you um, financial success. So um, across the board, hard work was the most contributing factor in these people's minds. And then um, luck, though, um, seemed to go lower as, um, as we got into the 100K range and above. Um, and then some people across the board thought it was both um, and other. And then from that data, I used my qualitative data and I um, created charts based on income levels and then um, 
how they defined financial success. So what they thought was the most contributing factors. Um, so uh, hard work, luck, both or other, and then how they um, defined financial success. And I determined this by associating factors, um, the open-ended responses of how they define financial success into three themes. So those themes were comfortability, stability, and freedom. Um, I also had another category, which tended to be things people were saying like budgeting and um, credit score and things like that. Um, so these are some patterns that arose. It seemed that um, in every income level, um, comfort and stability were really popular in um, hard work as the uh, most contributing factor. And then you can see comfort is really popular in the 50 to um, 75K range. And then in the 100, 150, and 200K range, the um, defining financial success as comfort was really um, popular across the board as well. So I pulled some interesting quotes from um, different people's perspective and how they define financial success. So here's a quote um, from someone who their income level is 25K to uh, 34.9K bracket and believe that privilege in regard to family structure and financial support was the most contributing factor to financial success. Um, so they said able to afford basic needs like education and healthcare with the additional comfort of buying without added debt. A broader picture would be to live self-sustainably with no dependence on corporations or private banks and be able to own land somewhere outright. So I, I took this quote and um, found it as independence, like independence from corporations and banks. And it was interesting to see when the income level was above 200,000, this was um, kind of a popular idea, uh, earning, earning money while you're sleeping, just the way that um, people were answering these questions based on their income level. And then um, this person believed hard work to be the most contributing factor. Another quote, um, independence, again, financial independence, not having to work for anyone, and that was the 100, 249K income bracket. Um, so, and I thought it was interesting, they actually wrote in that family socioeconomic status, genetic predispositions, individual decisions, and random chance events um, contributed the most. And then this idea of freedom, like freedom to experience different cultures and participating in philanthropic activities, um, which I thought was interesting in this income bracket. And they, they were saying that they thought both hard work and demographics um, contributed the most. And then in the lowest income bracket, the less than 25K, um, believe parents' financial success and luck to be the most contributing factors. Um, and their quote was, financial success to them was not have to check account before going grocery shopping. And my favorite quote, <laughs> being able to have a good time all the time, and that income bracket was 150 to 199K, and believes hard work to be the most contributing factor to financial success. Okay, so um, this being said, why, why should we care? Um, so by not acknowledging the, that luck plays a role in success, we're dismissing the fact that we have the power to create better circumstances or luck for future generations. Instead of clinging to ideas of individualism, investing in our communities is ultimately investing in ourselves and creating better living standards as a whole. As Ronald Wright puts it in his book, A Short, a Short History of Progress, uh, socialism never took root in America because the poor see themselves not as an exploited proletariat, but as temporarily embarrassed millionaires. Instead of focusing on what benefits us individually, we have the power to create social change and move towards the path of social justice and equality by thinking in terms of the collective. So instead of declaring the American dream is dead, there is no better time than to redefine it. And before I open up for questions, um, my further research is going to be um, a larger sample size um, running a statistical test, so I don't have to do it by hand, um, and then conducting follow-up interviews, because I just thought a lot of the quotes were really interesting, and I would have liked to kind of touch base with those people. Um, and then I also wanted to determine whether age plays a role in the way Americans view what contributes the most to financial success, and um, 
because I think it might be interesting to see as people get older if um, it's not just their income bracket, if it's maybe as they get older, they're kind of realizing maybe their circumstances have something to do with their um, success. My references, and then my acknowledgements. My, um, my mentors, Dr. Evan Adelson, Dr. Tanya Kravitz um, at San Diego Mesa College. Um, my uncle and uh, an official mentor, Murray Howard. Uh, my partner, friend, and cameraman back there, Dylan. And, um, uh, HTCC and UC Irvine and the San Diego Mesa Honors Program um, because none of this could be possible without them. Okay, and I'll open up the floor for questions. Thank you so much for your presentation. So, like she mentioned, we're going to go ahead and open up for any Q and A's. So, if anyone has questions, go ahead and ask. We have three minutes. So, Megan, why did you choose this particular topic? Um, I'm really interested in studying society and how we view um, the world around us and how that contributes to the way that like our um, structures are built and the way that um, things play out in our lives. Um, and I just thought it was really interesting to see how people view themselves. Like if they, if lower income um, view themselves as those temporarily embarrassed millionaires or if they are aware of their oppression. Um, and then I also think it's really interesting um, when people, with people who have the resources to create and implement social programs, um, they, they're the one with the resources, yet it seems to me that they're not the people really implementing these social programs. So I just thought it was interesting to see um, what they all, yeah. What was your personal opinion I think that um, you can definitely have um, a leg up if you, um, you know, are born into uh, a city that provides, I mean, I, I grew up in Chico and that was kind of more rural um, versus I live in San Diego now and there's just like, just told so many opportunities um, there. Um, I could imagine maybe growing up, even just growing up in a different community can provide you with some resources, even if maybe your socioeconomic status is lower. And I know that there are people who have, um, who are self-made, and I don't ever dismiss that fact, but that's just not the way that our society is built. So um, I think it's both. I think it's um, luck and then, uh, and then hard work on top of that, and having the talent and, um, and kind of passion to like, drive. I'm curious, um, your use of the word luck, you could have used many other words and it's one that really gets, you know, hooks you, but you could use privilege or something else, and I'm just curious, your choice of the word luck versus privilege, they, they seem synonymous, but I, I, I don't Yeah, so I, um, I, there is an overlap. So basically, um, when, in the early stages of my um, research, I, I just wanted to see if people saw a um, connection between luck and success. And then I started seeing overlap and then um, when people were answering these questions, I was using um, things that are out of our control, like things like privilege, um, you know, uh, gender, sexual orientation, things like that as luck together. Um, but I was just interested to see if people were making that connection or not. All right, so I, oh, we're gonna go ahead and end with that just because um, we're gonna go ahead and uh, honor the time for the next presenter. But thank you so much for your presentation.